uh, let me start by welcoming all of you. And uh, let me start by welcoming our uh, speakers, uh, Dr. Victor uh, Sanon, who I had the pleasure of talking to a couple of days ago. And I know that he has some colleagues from the Institute and I hope that you're feeling better and everything is fine uh, for you, <laughs> I hope. Okay. okay. And, uh, <laughs> and I would like to welcome Dr. Gibson Shigumira. Um, hello, Dr. Gibson. We had we we tried to connect yesterday, but it didn't work. But it's a it's yeah, great pleasure. My, my, my sincere apologies and thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Uh, let me give you just a quick background uh, for you and for um, anyone who's joining those um, webinars for the first time. Uh, those webinars come as part of the effort done by the Egyptian Center for Economic Studies, the research center that I have the, the honor of being the executive director of and the director of research as well. Um, it's a nonprofit uh, organization, uh, research organization independent uh, uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from the government. And it's been there for over 20 years now. Uh, I haven't been there for 20 years, but the institution has been there for over 20 years, okay. And we're doing research on Egypt, on the region, and a, a very high interest in, in Africa. Uh, um, uh, we are joining hands with the um, Commercial International Bank, which is actually the biggest private international bank in Egypt, in, in the initiatives in preparing for the COP and beyond the COP. We started mm -hmm. back in, uh, in June. Uh, uh, we had a conference on the 20th and the 21st of June. Uh, in preparation for the for the COP, and uh, we are going to have actually another one also on the third of uh, October. And in between, we're having a series of webinars where we are bringing up big time the voice of Africa on key issues okay, that need brainstorming. The purpose of the exercise is to come out of this brainstorming with specific recommendations, specific innovative solutions for the problem that we are addressing. Uh, we are going to put them in a very compact form in a couple of, no more than a couple of pages, and it will be uh, distributed and, and it will be sent to the Egyptian uh, uh, presidency and also distributed to the, um, you know, the uh, uh, African delegates and anyone who's interested to, it's more knowledge of what needs to be done as far as different issues are concerned. Uh, today's webinar is number five. Uh, the previous four were dealing with the following topics. The first one was about climate finance in a general uh, way, looking at the green uh, uh, fund, the infamous green fund that nobody is benefiting from and, and what can be done to benefit from it. Okay? Talking about uh, uh, some innovative solutions for finance and also talking about self-finance for Africa as a continent which is needed so that they can actually go about things in their special way, in their own way. The second one was talking about farmers, small farmers in specific, and uh, uh, the effect of the climate and, and what can be done to increase their uh, resilience. The third one was talking about the carbon market uh, and how Africa can and should benefit from it not only from the opportunities of the carbon market as a market, but also to try and get to be compensated a bit for the fact that they don't emit any emissions, as a matter of fact, and yet the entire world is doing it and sort of we are we're sort of paying the price for it all, even though we are the, the lungs of the entire world at the same time. Uh, 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 the fourth one was about natural uh, disasters and early warning for natural disasters, which is actually badly needed in order to uh, uh, protect people and in order to uh, reduce losses through those early warning systems. And the question is always about, <coughs> excuse me, how to uh, make those things go from the rhetoric and the big objectives to actual practical actions. Uh, uh, today's webinar is about adaptation readiness, okay? Uh, well, we all know that uh, countries need to have adaptation plans for the changes in the uh, for, for, for the climate condition and, and what they can do about it and that those adaptation plans perhaps put them in a better position to benefit from the finance opportunities that exist in the world. Okay? Uh, this, and it's, a, it's, it's not very easy for all developing countries. For Africa, it's, just, it's a tougher problem 
okay? Because uh, Africa is, as a continent is highly diversified in the level of, uh, in the level of development. And, and, and so the problem becomes a bit uh, bigger. Okay? And so our ultimate uh, question in today's exercise is to know how can these plans be prepared in a comprehensive and inclusive uh, way given all the challenges and how to meet or how to deal with the differences between, uh, between the uh, different uh, countries in the African continent and their different levels of development. Okay? Um, I, I have the pleasure of having two great uh, speakers. I mentioned them by name, but let me uh, proceed to say something about their CVs. Uh, Dr. Victor uh, Sana uh, is the executive director of uh, CAPES, uh, C-A-P-E-S, in case I'm pronouncing it wrong, a research and innova innovation organization encouraging financial autonomy. He has been awarded several prestigious honors Amongst them are officer of the Order of the Stallion, as well as Knight of the National Order, the highest honorary distinction in Burkina Faso, a recognizing significant contribution to the country. He has written numerous publications exploring different themes, such as development of communication, uh, strategy for the Ministry of Education, and prevention of insecurity and crime. Uh, uh, Dr. Sen holds a PhD from Bordeaux Montaigne University, addressing freedom of the press in Sahelian West African democracies. And I understand that uh, Dr. Sanan has also with him other colleagues from the uh, organization to uh, also talk on the topic of today's webinar. Um, uh, our second uh, speaker is Dr. Gibson uh, Shigomira. Uh, uh, he's currently the executive director of Ziparu. He has extensive experience in research, including coordinating research studies editing publications and developing databases. He has also done work in his individual capacity for civil society organizations, such as Nango and Action Aid and, and Zincode, uh, Unido and others. Uh, and uh, he also has extensive teaching and research experience in economics as a lecturer at the University of Zimbabwe for more than 12 years and has worked as a consultant for the African Capacity Building Foundation, ECBF, who I have to thank actually for uh, recommending and helping connect with our two uh, uh, excellent speakers. Uh, uh, having, having said that, let me start by you know, asking a question to both of you, with, you know, a bit of a brief answer for the beginning. What do you mean exactly by adaptation readiness? When we talk about adaptation readiness of a country, what exactly do we, have, do we mean? Uh, should I start with Dr. With Dr. Sanan, Victor Sanan? Uh, morning, yes. morning, morning, morning. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to answer you, but uh, I, 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 I stay with my colleague, who is a specialist of uh, a climate uh, changing domain. He uh, is uh, Mr. Davis. And he is going to help me eh, because my English is not so good. I explained it yesterday. So uh, tomorrow. French is perfect, but we don't have French translation. So, that's, so no it's, problem, no it's problem, fine. No <laughs> so we'll try to, to give us, uh, to give you our, our, our thinking. And we are going to try to, to answer you. Davis. Yeah. Okay. So, Hello. Good morning. Good morning, all. It's a pleasure to be part of this meeting, and uh, we hope that uh, at the end we should have give you something. Uh, uh, I mean, um, uh, useful for uh, the, the the perspective of this meeting. So, uh, coming to the questions, I think that. Uh, uh, when you talk about uh, uh, adaptation readiness to the climate change, uh, we can uh, envisage like uh, the actions, the action taken at individual uh, communal or state level to face the climate, the climate change. Yeah. What do we do to get uh, resilient, 
uh, when we face the climate change effects in the country. And so I can say that this is what we can uh, uh, understand by your question. Yeah, in a nutshell. In a nutshell, okay. Dr. Dr. Gibson. Okay, Th thank you very much uh, for, for the question that has been raised. Uh, and I think uh, just highlighting the point that has been raised, adaptation, we are looking at it within the context. And the context being how do we adapt to climate change and the effects that are there with regards to the way we plan, the way we finance uh, the processes, and the institutional readiness and capacities, as well as skills that we have to be able to deal with uh, 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 that, that readiness. So definitely there are parameters that you could uh, look at with regards to uh, our readiness. This could be institutional setup. What are the institutional setups that we have on the African continent that can facilitate us to respond to the urgent need of climate change adaptation. We might also look at the legislative frameworks that are in place. Are they fit for purpose with regards to uh, addressing issues of adaptation? You can also look at the issue that we had already earlier on mentioned, the issue of funding mechanisms. Do we have the necessary resources to be able to uh, deal with uh, adaptation? So it's another issue. And also, we also look at uh, programs that are already running on the ground in the various countries, which could be reflected through the development plans and budgets to see whether a country is, in actual fact, ready to address uh, these issues. That will be my submission, uh, Abla. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, it's, and this is actually a great start. Uh, um, you, you mentioned all the parameters, okay? The plan, the finance, the institutional readiness, the legislative framework, the skills, the funding mechanism. Is the fact that Africa is so diversified, okay? Uh, um, creating a problem for the continent in benefiting from the opportunities to help them adapt to the climate change. Is this diversification a problem for the continent as a whole? All it really makes no difference as each country is sort of dealing with it alone. And is it okay for every country to deal with it alone? I'm asking this before getting into the details of the of the what is needed at the institutional level, what is needed at the level of skills. I'm I'm I'm, I'm focusing on the difference between countries. Maybe I, I will I will I will start with Dr. Gibson and then go to uh, to Dr. Uh, uh, Victor afterwards. Dr. Gibson, would you, would you answer that question? Yes, yes, please. Yes, uh, diversity uh, is, Africa is diverse. It's not only a, a single country. There are different countries. There are also different communities and localities with various levels of capacity and which are also being impacted differently by um, uh, climate change. So in that regard, the approach that is taken is not kind of like a one size kind of fit all, but it has to take on, take on board those differential impacts and the different differences also come with the level of development, which also necessitates the capacity and adaptive capacity of the various uh, countries. So there is diversity, but also at the same time, there are other challenges that cannot be solved by a single country which also require a collaborative continent-wide uh, approach. So an integrated approach to the way we address uh, the climate uh, uh, change and adaptation issues then becomes critical. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dr. Victor. Yeah, thank you for uh, the, the second question. Mm -hmm. So what we can say is that, uh, yeah, for sure, Africa is uh, diverse and this is like uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, we have our specific question, we have our specific uh, problems, but uh, when we come to climate change, um, this diversity cannot be um, considered as a problem to face the, 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 the climate change. We have to take complementary actions between countries and this is for uh, us how we can be strong 
uh, as a continent and face and address uh, this question when it comes to uh, a world and global uh, uh, question. Um, we, you, you can, we, we have some example for uh, climate yes. effects. Yeah, this affects both countries or like a country sharing borders. And so the action taken in one country uh, can be implemented in another one. So uh, it's a matter of integrating um, the actions, the plans, the financing, so that uh, it can be, uh, it can have more impact and more sustainable uh, effects uh, in the future. So uh, diversity, the diversity of Africa, uh, this uh, climate change is not uh, a problem. It's not a problem, it's a fact that we have just to consider one uh, wide facing this question of uh, how we adapt, how we can get resilient to this uh, climate change. Okay, uh, great. Now, can you give me a specific example from this last point you mentioned? that the countries that are sharing borders, that there are policies that they can implement together and, and therefore they are going to benefit together. Can you give me a specific example? Yeah, for sure. You have, for example, uh, uh, some rivers crossing different countries. And uh, uh, depending on the action taken in one country, it can affect the other one. You know? So when, for example, this river is getting dry, if you take one action in the, first, the, the previous country, you have to share this action with the second so that we are, because we are, you are sharing the same resource, okay? So if an action taken in one country is not shared with the second, it, you can have a, like, a, a, what can I say? You can have other action taken in the second, but that are contrary to what you have you know, uh, deal with in the first country. So when you face this question, you have to discuss together. And uh, another question, another example is, for example, this forest that some some uh, countries are sharing. So if in uh, the first one, uh, we say that we are going to exploit this forest for economical reason, while in the second, it's about of preserving this forest, you see that the action taken in the first one will affect the forest in the second. So uh, when it comes to thinking of climate change, it has to be uh, shared action, integrated action for these two countries to get ready to how will uh, the action of each country affect the same uh, resource that we are uh, sharing. Yeah, but that, that very specific, the, the very specific example that you mentioned is actually pointing to the difference in the level of development of the two countries, because they might perceive things differently. I mean, those two countries exactly. sharing the river, one of them, the preservation as an important target, the other one does not see that because they are living at a level that is actually at a much lower level of development. And actually there is a problem uh, because of that. How, how do you suggest for them to manage this issue? Because they mean the very example that you mentioned, Okay, there is a problem. They are yeah, sharing sure. the same thing, but but how 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 do you manage this? How do you deal with this? The the we have we have an example here uh, in in Burkina. We have uh, some cross rivers uh, uh, through I think three three countries. You have uh, uh, Mali, you have Niger, you have uh, Burkina Faso, and. Uh, these countries, they have set up a, a council, a council of the management of this specific resource, so that the action uh, to be taken when dealing with this uh, uh, water resource it has to be taken uh, through this council, so that every country is at the same level of information, so that they harmonize the actions. You know? So it's a matter of creating a consultation framework for all uh, concerned country to, to plan and to finance uh, even to, to, yeah, to, to, to follow up uh, the action uh, being uh, taken to, uh, regarding this uh, specific research. Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, uh, back, back to you, 
Dr. Gibson, you mentioned that there are challenges that cannot be solved by individual countries and they have to be dealt with regionally. Can we have also, again, examples uh, uh, of these? No, not not only you. borders, but actually even at the regional level, can we, we need more, you know, more, more examples here. Okay. Thank you very much. I think uh, just riding on the point that was being uh, raised by the colleagues in Burkina, you, you realize uh, commonly owned uh, resources, uh, natural resources within within the continent, which then would need a regional plan and regional coordination in terms of exploitation and uh, ensuring uh, the benefits of it. And in some cases, you might want to even uh, uh, construct, say, infrastructure to be able to exploit those resources. Uh, th that requires uh, a, a, a regional approach and even a continental approach. And I think examples are many in terms of, if you look at our re uh, regional economic uh, groupings, your SADAX, COMESA, uh, uh, ECOWAS, they do have within their uh, regional blueprints, how they are going to also address the issue of climate change and adaptation at that level on issues that relate to uh, the, at the regional level. This, I think, takes into co co takes cognizance of the fact that the issues of capacity to adapt, they are at um, multiple sec scales at various uh, levels. And you have to identify those which can be dealt with at local community level, at national level, at regional level, as well as at continental level. Okay. And I, okay. Let's 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 dwell uh, uh, deeper on this. Okay. On the on the capacity to adapt. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, you mentioned the again the plan, the finance, the institution the readiness, and the legislative uh, framework. Could you give us a bit more about that, please? on the capacity yeah. to adapt and, and what needs yeah. to be built up? Yes, I think you mentioned earlier on uh, the issue of uh, planning the uh, national plans, adaptation plans. And I think is mm -hmm. coming up with these national adaptation plans, there are a number of uh, areas that need to be looked at. I'll focus on three. The first one could be finding the right entry point as you are trying to come up with a plan what could be considered as uh, the right entry, entry points. And I think in determining the, the right entry points, you also need to include issues of uh, inclusion and ensuring that uh, the national plans and as well as the adaptation plans, they speak to each other, uh, as well as issues of resourcing those plans. And sometimes you, you then have to have a legislative framework that enable that uh, planning to, to take place and well, as well as uh, resourcing it. Then you also have to have a, a suitable institutional uh, framework and coordinating mechanism that ensures that the plan is implemented. The second thing that I would want to talk about is also in supporting adaptation action with scientific information where it's evidence-based. And in that regard, one example is for you to come up with a building adaptation plans, it requires reliable data, statistical information. What is the status quo? Where are we? What are, what, what are the, uh, the, the benchmarks? So in that regard, there is need to build capacity for interpreting the data, communicating with scientists and policymakers so that there is that interface in terms of understanding the issues and policymakers can then bring these issues into uh, policy. And there's also the issue of expectation management that need to be dealt with. As these issues are there, but countries don't have resources to, ans to address everything. There are other multiple challenges. So how do we build that uh, expectations within that? Then lastly, is also uh, bridging the gap between uh, adaptation planning and implementation. And that talks to the issues of coordination at national and local level, as well as uh, continental level. And linked to that, what also affects uh, implementation is the fragmented resource envelopes of the various countries that also need to be coordinated in that, in that regard. 
So in the end, you need a very coherent uh, funding mechanisms that uh, addresses the adaptation, climate adaptation issues, but at the same time, linking with the national overall national development uh, processes. That would be my submission. Okay, thank you very much. This is extremely useful. And I'll come back to you by asking, you know, digging in each one a bit deeper, okay? okay. But let me go to uh, Dr. Victor uh, uh, now, okay? And, and, and see, again, what would you add to these, right, as important, okay, in order to improve the adaptation uh, uh, readiness, okay, at the, at the regional level, okay? What Dr. Gibson mentioned uh, are more about, you know, what each country can do, okay, and join others. At, at the regional level or at the level of the continent, what would you add? Yeah. I think that uh, the previous uh, uh, the predecessor has mentioned the main uh, action that can be can be done, uh, and he mentioned, for example, the ECOWAS. We also have this uh, uh, inter community uh, for for Sahel, for Sahel uh, uh, what we call in French uh, seals. Okay, so. Um, this uh, a permanent interstate uh, committee for uh, draft control in the Sahel. Yeah, Chris, the, 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 the name in English. Yeah. And this is a consultation, a consultation also framework where uh, the climate change, where the, the draft questions are discussed. And uh, um, it's allow developing uh, common uh, actions for the, uh, the member state of this uh, community yeah so uh, yes it is uh, important to have a uh, uh, specific um, i mean data from the countries from the states uh, to gather them and then see uh, what are the action what action can be taken yeah together so uh, it means also that in each country we have uh, we have human resource, we have uh, human capacity to, uh, to address the question or to collect the information regarding the, uh, the, the question and to raise it at um, a regional level and more later at uh, the continent level. So um, if this is not there in every country, it means that we may miss some important information when we address the climate change in general in Africa. Yeah. So uh, capacity building is still something that we need to, to, to work in. And also the, the mind changing, yeah, which starts at individual level, because if at individual level it is not there, it means that if when if you work at institutional or national level, it never works. So important is to start. Uh, including these questions at individual level. It can be uh, from the school, it can also be from these uh, associations in the villages uh, to sensitize, to, in, to give the key facts of this climate change. Um, because for some people in the village, when it is not raining, it's because there is a wizard blocking the rain somewhere. Uh, while this is linked to the climate change, you see? Yeah, so it's something the, the that we is there with his one. The weather is there is with his one, and we have to stop it. Exactly. You know, it's not, yeah, not yeah, too. exactly, exactly. So it's something to take in consideration uh, mm -hmm. before we go at uh, a higher le level. Yeah, so thank okay. you for the question. This is what we can submit also. All right, thank you so much. I will, I will come back to you so that you get ready, okay, on the mind changing. And, and, and what needs to be done from international organizations to help you do that at the level of the government, at the level of international organization. And I will come back to you again on the human capacities, okay? But for now, I'll go back to Dr. Gibson again, okay? Uh, and let me go to the you know, key, uh, uh, very strong messages, elements that are needed. When you talk about the, um, the national plan, and, and the adaptation plans and how they need to speak to each other. This is actually what you said. They need to speak to each other. Okay, can you give us some 
you know, specific examples, what do you mean by speaking to each other? I understand what you mean generally, but let's be specific as far as the climate is concerned. Where, how should they be speaking and, and, and where do we see the biggest problems in the case of the African countries? Thank you very much. I think when I when I speak when I say the, they, they need to speak to each other, I think they need to be aligned. When no, no, you look at say, no, no, no. Uh, I understand, of course, but how do they speak? No, no, I understand, uh, of okay. course. There's no way. <laughs> there is no wizard here with one. No, no, no. How do they? They need to be connected and related. Okay. I know the, 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 the connection <laughs> then comes. The connection then comes through the articulated strategies within either the national development plan and the, the National uh, Adaptation Action Plan. Because at the end of the day, all these plans have to be resourced. And if they are not competing and they are prioritized and aligned, we, it then also it gets reflected in the national budgets for the country mm -hmm. where these activities are adequately uh, resourced. And even mm -hmm. where you are also approaching development partners you're also approaching development partners with a comprehensive and coherent uh, plan that is dealing with all these uh, uh, issues at the same time. Mm. Can we have? Can Can you give me a specific example about a typical, okay, a typical conflict between adaptation plan and national plan in relation to everything uh, related to the climate? Of course. Okay, I I think. What, what might happen is, for example, say if, for us to address this uh, climate change uh, challenge, we might want to uh, put resources to, for, for a collaborative approach either at a regional level, but they are competing national uh, objectives, which are outlined in the national plan. And because of that, these things are now put on a, on, on a, on a scale where we, we then say, which, which, which do we address first the climate adaptation uh, issue or strategy or the national objective. But I think a realization and awareness of the immensity of the climate change challenge and its implication to other developmental goals would uh, enable us to be able to uh, put priority in addressing that issue because it has multiple downside effects to the economy. Okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm still, I'm still hoping for, for a very specific, uh, uh, you know, example from reality. But we can come back to okay. that. If, yeah, if you, I may uh, take the floor yeah. for, uh, yeah, if you allow me. Uh, for example, consider a country that has just discovered that uh, it has gold or a demon. So in mm -hmm. the in the plan, it it, it should be. To, to use to to extract this uh, natural resource in order uh, I mean to build up the development but if you see that uh, exploiting this resource will include that you will uh, you will destroy a forest somewhere and this forest is uh, a shared uh, resource with another uh, or, uh, in a nearby uh, country so uh, at national level, you will see that the plan is to develop the country and this development go through the, the exploitation of this natural resource. And at the other side, you have also to think of climate change that you can create and that will affect your neighbor. So it can be difficult to decide where do we go? If I stop exploiting this resource, how do I get developed? If there is no other funding for the, the development of the country. Uh, I don't know if this is uh, an example that can answer your question. I think that's the, I think that's a good example and actually it calls for the international organizations okay to support Africa to be able to develop okay to be able to develop without without compromising the forests and compromising the, the, the climate because they are they are caught in, in, in a corner. And that's actually the challenge that Africa is facing uh, uh, right now, that they have to develop under conditions that are completely different from what Europe had when they, when they developed at the beginning when everything was free and they could destroy the world and become industrialized and, 
and, and get away with it every step of the way. Now you cannot get away with anything. So absolutely, absolutely, I know what. So I think it's a good example. Thank you for this intervention. And please feel free, I mean, that, that we talk together. Back to you, may, Dr. Gibson. May, maybe yes, to just... Yes. Yeah. Uh, to just illustrate the point, I, I think you have, we have raised the point, particularly when you look at the energy sector and the green energy uh, yeah. move in terms of adaptation. And we have a number of African countries say that they've just discovered uh, core resources which could be used for, 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 for energy. But at the same time, this will have an impact on greenhouse gas emissions. So, how mm -hmm. to uh, then assist these countries to be able to achieve their development objectives, which might say exploiting our natural resources to, to, to leverage on natural resources to enhance economic development. But at the same time, for you to leverage on that, you are also now having to uh, be comply with the greenhouse uh, reduction in greenhouse emission gases. So I think, as you pointed out, that's an area that also needs to take cognizance of the developmental needs of the country and how they can also be assisted to be able to comply while at the same time achieving their developmental goals. Absolutely, and I think that's a very, very important point because uh, uh, my next round of questions was going to deal with the, the roles of the governments and the national organization, international organizations and so on. But here we already have a conclusion that the national plan and the adaptation plan, they look from outside like they are the decision of the countries when actually, Okay, there is a need for a lot of support from the international organizations so that those national plans can achieve the double target of having the development and at the same time protecting the, the, the climate. There's a lot, of, a lot of support that needs to come from outside for you to be able to do that. So thank you so much for those two, for those two examples. I really appreciate it.